Creation longs for what's in store. May you be honored and glorified, exalted and lifted high. Here at your feet, I lay morning. Welcome to Church Online. Welcome to Grace Church Online. Welcome home. I'm so glad you're here this morning, whether it's your very first time. And if you're new, please write the word new in the comments and we would love to chat with you. If you come to Grace Church every week, we are so glad you're here. My name is Pastor Troy. I'm one of the pastors and it's my pleasure to welcome you to church today. We just have a couple things that we wanna mention. As many of you have already filled out, we put a survey out this week online, a survey about how you would feel as we begin to gather again in the coming weeks. We wanna know if you're nervous, if you're excited, all the emotions that you're going through, we need to know because we need to know how to prepare. So I would encourage you that if you haven't filled out that survey, to do that today, to go in the comments above this video, in the description, and please fill out that survey today. That will help us prepare and to be ready to say, welcome home. Lastly, this morning, I want you to know that I would really encourage you to give. If you call Grace Church your home, this is our time to pull together and to prepare again to gather. I know that we're in a challenging season, but the costs have been significant as we prepare our building with all the sanitization protocols, with all the equipment that we've needed to buy to be able to stream and record our services live and in person, I would really encourage you to be faithful in your tithes and your offerings. Just as a review, we can give in a few different ways. You can text to give to the number right here on the screen. You just put that number in your texting program and text whatever amount you would like to give and it will walk you through the process. Or you can e-transfer your giving at give at bucktooshchurch.com. Right here are the details. Or you can go to our website, bucktooshchurch.com, and there's a tab there. You click on that, it's secure, and you can give there. Lastly, today, between one and three o'clock, you can come to 41 Girardville, and you can actually drop off your donation if you're like. If you're a guest, we are so glad you're here. There's absolutely no pressure to give. Welcome to church this morning. Here's Pastor Mariah. Hey friends, thanks for joining our online service today. Pastor Mariah here, so you know what that means. We are continuing our Find It Challenge. This week, you will be looking for this, an eye, because in our Mighty Kids service, we talked about Saul and how he was blinded on the road to Damascus. This week, adults can play as well. So kids and adults, Keep an eye out for this symbol throughout the whole service. Don't miss any, they can be quite sneaky. At the end of service, you have until 11.30 to send me a private Facebook message with your guests. At 12 o'clock, I will be going live on Facebook. I will do a draw between all the adults who got it right and all the kids who got it right for a gift card for ice cream. And so don't miss any, keep an eye out, and it starts now. Good morning and welcome back to Grace Church Online. My name is Alex and if you don't know me, I am Mighty Kids Summer Student for this summer. If you would like to connect with us, you can reach us in the connection card that is found in the description of this video up above. And if you need prayer this morning, you can reach us at pray at bucktushchurch.com and we would love to pray for you. As you may know, we have a meal program going on at Grace Church, and here's a video that explains a little bit more about it. Hi, my name is Pastor Troy from Grace Church in Baktush. 
I have something really exciting that I want to share with you today. We know that things have been really hard when it comes to the whole COVID-19. It's been really difficult on families, uh, on food security, and things have been really challenging. We know that this has been challenging, not just on certain groups of people, but on everybody. We really believe as a church that we need to do our part. Part of our mission as a church is to go near, meaning to help people that live near to us. And so we're here to help today. So today we're announcing something really exciting. Grace Church, Mighty Kids, Youthquake. We are partnering together with two organizations, with Second Harvest Food Support and United Way of Moncton to feed thousands of people over the coming months. People who need a helping hand. What I want you to hear today is this, that this is not a handout. This is a hand up. And we're doing it because we love the communities around us. And we're here to help. Here's how this is gonna work. In the description of this video, there's gonna be a link. All you have to do is click on that link and fill out a very simple form. I want you to know that we're not looking for any big amount of information or any private information. We just need your name and how many meals that you need. If you need delivery, we're obviously gonna need a little bit more information about that, but we are not looking to hound you with emails. Really, what we wanna do is we wanna help. So you'll just fill out the form, and then you will come to Grace Church in Buktush, just to the Buktush Youthquake Center. You will just drive up. You'll actually just stay in your car. Someone will come out, they'll take your name and the number of meals that you'll need. There'll be hot meals and there'll be lunch meals, lunch bag meals. Then with gloves, with a mask, after following all the food safety guidelines, we will actually bring the meal, place it in your car. It'll actually be a no touch service. So we hope that you take advantage of this. We're so happy to help. Here's how it works. You simply have to register. And once you register, you can come every Wednesday between 11 and one o'clock. So 11 in the morning and one o'clock PM, just after lunch on Wednesdays, you'll just drive up, no strings attached. We just want to help. The last thing, the last question you might have is this, how do I qualify to do this? How do I know if I'm eligible for a meal? Well, let me help you with that. If you're a senior citizen and things have just been tough, difficult to get out food and ordering food online has been difficult for you, you qualify. Maybe you're a family and things have just become very tight I want you to know that this is for you. Maybe you live alone and cooking is a challenge or maybe cooking for just one person. Maybe your budget's tight. I want you to know this is for you. Maybe you're a frontline worker. Maybe you are a paramedic, a doctor, a nurse, a police officer, a fireman, and everybody in between and you just find yourself pressured with time and stress. This is for you. Maybe you're just having a hard time making ends meet. Whether you're working or not working, this is for you. Whoever you are, we wanna make this available to help the people in our communities. All you have to do is register in the link in the description. Our address will be on the screen, 41 Jouardville, Bactrish, New Brunswick, E4S 3G3. We really hope to see you on Wednesdays between 11 and 1. 
I ask you to do me a favor. Please share this video so we can get it out to as many people as we can. Don't forget to register in the link. We would love to help. We have a team of workers and a team of volunteers that want to help. Why? Because we believe that God has called us to go. And during this time, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go near and we're going to help as many people as we can. Have a great day. I'll see you Wednesday. Here are just a couple of fun things we have going on this week at Grace Church. On Monday at 7 p.m., you can catch Pastor Mariah on Facebook Live reading bedtime stories at 7 p.m. She reads them in both French and English, so make sure you catch that. As well as on Wednesdays, Wednesday evenings, Pastor Troy does Trivia with Troy that is also done on Facebook Live, and it is so much fun. Make sure that you catch that as well. Join us in prayer as we pray over the service. Dear God, we are so thankful for the opportunity to be able to meet online every week, God. And we know that you are going to use this service to do great things and encourage us this week. So we just pray that whatever you are going to do, God, uh, that we would be open to receive it and that we would be excited for what you have in store for us. Thank you for who you are and what you do. In your name, amen.
here. Today I'm joined by my husband Nathan and we're going to talk a little bit for our Fab Five series. So Nathan, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, sure. Uh, my name is Nathan Hazard um, and I married this wonderful woman here which brought me into Grace Church. Awesome. Okay, so in the past you know, couple years you've been going through a journey to, to read the Bible. Why don't you explain that to us a little bit? Sure. 
Well, I've always been a Christian. My parents were both pastors, so I was always kind of raised in that environment. And around when I became an older teenager to a young adult, I kind of needed to take that faith that had kind of been given to me and make it my own. Uh, so I really went hard into studying the Bible uh, soon after coming here. So you've been studying, so you must have a favorite part of the Bible, story, verse. Why don't you go through that with us a little bit? Sure. Well, the part of the Bible that's left the most lasting impression on me uh, is a bit unconventional. And it's these three books that we put side by side in our Bible. Uh, so that would be Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Job. So Proverbs is about um, kind of the way we expect the world to be. We're told when God made the world, he made it with wisdom. And so if we live wisely and we live in wisdom, our life will work out for the better. And this is where we get those phrases we love, like uh, raise up a child well. Uh, when he grows old, he'll not stray from that path. Or the wise man prospers, uh, but the fool, foolish man finds destruction. In Ecclesiastes, we get a very different story. So Ecclesiastes, the author introduces us to this teacher who he's found and thinks that we need to hear from. And the teacher is a very hard man to listen to. So he basically tells us our life is like smoke. It's hevel is the word. Um, so it's here one day and gone the next. Uh, we're like blades of grass uh, for how long we're here in the cosmic scheme of things. Um, and life is random. Bad things happen to good people. Um, he tells stories that we've all heard about people who did everything right and had everything fall apart anyway. In the third book, Job, we get this kind of piecing together, this very different story. It's not a book of instruction, but it's a story this time. So what happens to Job is Job is a really great man. And God is talking up, up in court and saying how wonderful Job is, how he's the best example of what humanity can be. He's perfect. And an accuser stands in the court and says, he's only perfect because every time he does good things, he gets rewarded. Let me have my way with him and I'll show you what Job is really like. Job knows none of this, but he finds his life is destroyed. His family all passes away of terrible disease. His house is destroyed. His crops all die. He loses everything. And then he accuses God. He's angry. And his friends keep telling him, this is something you've done. God is just. You must have sinned. You've done a horrible thing. You've killed someone. You've been mean to your children. You've done wrong. But what happens in the end is God shows up and he takes Job and he answers his accusations. And what he does is he zooms him out. He flies him up into the heavens. He shows him the whole of earth. And Job realizes his perspective isn't everything. He doesn't see everything. And sometimes we don't understand what God does. And when you take all of that and you piece it together, you look at all these three books, you go, I do good things, but sometimes... It doesn't work out. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. And when you hold all this, it answers those bigger questions that you never thought the Bible could answer. Wow. Safe to say you're much smarter than I am. Uh, quickly, Nathan, last thing. What is your favorite thing about Grace Church? My favorite thing about Grace Church is just the people. They're just amazing. We are pretty great. You're right. So, Nathan, thank you so much for sharing uh, your heart with us this morning. Uh, we really appreciate it. It was my pleasure. Now, let's watch this Father's Day video together. No matter how old we are, we always remember what our dads say and do. My dad is more like Jesus than your dad. Nuh-uh. My dad doesn't let anybody eat any food until we pray for it. My dad prays for one minute every day. You know what? Our church has pancakes. This is what my sister and mom use for their blush. My dad says that mean kids never know what they're talking about. Because their parents don't know what they're talking about either. My dad says to punch meanies in the face. Then my mom says, don't ever do that. And my dad goes to time out. Ha, 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 ha.
My dad's beard is itchy whenever he kisses me. My dad takes me to church so we could learn to be just like Jesus. My daddy prays for me. Then he makes me stop talking and go to bed. Then I get a flashlight and read my comic book. That's a sin. He's sinning. No, I'm not. Sinner. No, I'm not. R2. 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 My dad said that if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it. My dad never stays mad at me. My dad taught me to forgive, because Jesus forgives us every time we ask. I want a mohawk. I wish I had hair. It's OK. Your hair will probably grow back. Thanks for being our dads for all our lives. It's hard to believe. But today we're on our final week of the Fab Five series. Just a series of messages about stories in the Bible that have impacted my life. And it's hard to believe how fast time goes. The very first week we talked about sacrifice, how it's important not just to give a donation with our mouth, but to actually sacrifice our lives to God. Then we talked about compassion, about the importance of having a heart that is moved with compassion. And compassion moves us to action. Then we talked about worth. Where does your worth come from? Where does my worth come from? Does it come from people or does it come from God? Because people's opinions change about us. And last week we talked about breakthrough about living lives that are urgent. Urgent not just to bring ourselves to Jesus, to bring the people around us that we love to Jesus. It's kind of funny. The series is called Fab Five. And we're actually going to be taking, we're finishing it today, and then next week we're doing a Father's Day. But then we're going to do one more series, and I guess we're going to turn Fab Five into Fab Six just for one more week to finish off June. Starting next week, we're gonna introduce what series we're gonna be doing after that. So one thing that's interesting is when we read the Bible, sometimes we have a hard time to read the Bible because we think we don't understand it or maybe we don't understand it. And here's a little hint that you can write down. It's called SOAP, S-O-A-P. And I use this when I read the Bible. What I do is I just pick a part of the scripture, S, scripture. O stands for observation. I just start to read that story over and over. And I start to observe things in the story. And those things are the things that just stand out to me. If there's a word that I don't understand, I write it down. So I identify the scripture, I observe it, then I apply it to my life. And then at the end, I pray. Soap. I would encourage you to do that. One way that can help us to understand the Bible a little better is if we kind of look for special or different words that link two thoughts together. So for example, the word like. The like just in the Bible or in any written book, it links two words together. And the Bible does this all the time. In Matthew 13, 33, it says, the kingdom of God is like yeast. Now, sometimes we might have a hard time to understand the kingdom of God, but it'd be easier to understand yeast. So if we understand yeast, we'll understand the kingdom. Or Proverbs 16, 24, it says, kind words are like honey. Matthew 8, 13 says we must become like children. It doesn't mean we should be childish, but there's certain things about children that if we understand, we'll understand what the scripture means. I have kids. And the funny thing about, about kids is this, is sometimes they don't listen. I don't know, maybe your kids are perfect, 
Uh, but my kids, sometimes they don't listen. But I want you to use your imagination. Let's just imagine that I asked one of my children to go clean their room. And I said, okay, I want you to go clean your room today. And they go in their room and they're there for a half an hour and they come out and I say, okay, how did the room cleaning go? And they say, well, I thought about it. I'll say, yeah, you thought about it, but did you do it? And they'll say, no, I, I haven't done it. And I'll say, no, turn around, go back in your room and clean your room. Half hour later, they come back out and I'll say, did you clean your room? I'll say, no, I thought about it. I studied, I, I, I Googled what it would look like if I cleaned my room, but I didn't actually clean my room. I mean, I would be frustrated. I mean, I'm sure you wouldn't because you don't get frustrated with your kids, but I would be frustrated. I would send them back, probably raise my voice, say, you go clean your room. An hour later, they come back out. I say, did you clean your room? I say, well, no, I didn't. I did more studying about it. I studied it in Greek and in Hebrew, uh, what it would mean uh, in the original language to clean my room, but I didn't actually clean my room. And I had a few friends over, and me and my friends studied what it would look like if I cleaned my room. I mean, I know that this is, is a bit of a, a strange illustration, but here's the truth. Often, we are not people of action when it comes to the Bible. We like to come to church. We'll even join a small group. Maybe even read it a little bit. We want to study about it, but we don't want it to transform our lives and transform our actions. So I'd encourage you today, as we listen to this story, I would encourage you to let God's word speak to you today. So I have a great friend that's going to read the scripture to us today. First of Peter, chapter 5, verses 1 to 10. The flock of God. Now I have something to say to the elders in your group. I also am an elder. I have seen Christ suffering, and I will share in the glory that you will be shown to us. I beg you to shepherd God's flock, for whom you are responsible. Watch over them because you want to, not because you are forced. That is how God wants it. Do it because you are happy to serve, not because you want money. Do not be like a ruler over people you are responsible for. Be a good example to them. Then, when Christ, the chef shepherd, comes, you will get a glorious crown that you'll never lose in its beauty. In the same way, younger people should be willing to under older people at all of you should be very humble with each other. Be humble under God's powerful hand so he will lift you up when the right time comes. Give all your worries to him because he cares about you. Control yourself and be careful. The devil, your enemy, goes around like a roaring lion looking for someone to eat. Refuse to give it to, in to him by standing strong in your faith. You know that your Christian family all over the world is having the same kinds of suffering. And after you suffer for a short time, God who gives all grace will make everything right. He will make you strong and support you and keep you from falling. He, he called you to share in his glory in Christ, a glory that you'll continue forever. All power in his forever and ever. Amen. Great job, Liliana. You uh, did an excellent job. The first thing that jumps out to me in this is one of my favorite things. This is probably something that uh, really started to shape my life about three or four years ago. 
But truth is, we all have weaknesses. We all have things that we're good at, but we all have things that tempt us. We all have things that trip us up. One thing that stands out to me in this, it says to be sober-minded. You say, what does that mean? It means to have sound judgment, to be in your right mind, to be sensible, to be of sound mind, to do everything we can to make the best decisions. And to not, not only people say, well, this must mean you shouldn't drink or do drugs because you won't be in your right mind. Well, that, that's part of it. But also being angry makes you not make good decisions. I mean, nobody says, I make my best decisions when I'm angry. I mean, we don't even make good decisions when we're hungry. But here we are. I would encourage you today to be somebody who strives to be sober-minded, to has a mind that is always fixed on God. In the passage that Liliana wrote, it talks about a lion. And it does what we talked about a little earlier. It takes two things that we wouldn't think really are like, the devil and a roaring lion. And it puts them together so we can better understand the devil. Because we can do some research and maybe understand the lion. One thing we don't maybe don't know about lions is lions actually rest up to about 20 hours a day. <laughs> some of you are probably thinking, yeah, that's me during quarantine. I rest and I Netflix up to 20 hours a day. But lions actually rest up to 20 hours a day. Contrary to popular thought, they're not always hunting. They're often just resting and preparing. I think what we need to understand is the devil is exactly like that. The devil is not always tempting us. He's not always trying to sidetrack us. Often he's just watching. And when you look at a lion, you can see them. If you go to YouTube, they'll let deer and antelope and animals walk close by and they'll just lie. But they're watching and they're waiting for the right opportunity. Lions stalk their prey. Lions aren't the fastest animal in the world. So what they will actually do, because the prey that they're trying to hunt is actually faster than them. They will actually just stalk up really slowly till they get to the point where they can pounce. But here's the truth. The devil's just like that. The devil is not just resting, but he's also watching and stalking, waiting for the right moment where we're distracted. The lion will wait for the deer to have its head down or to be distracted by its fawn. And when it wanders away, then the lion begins to stalk and to pounce. See, the devil's the exact same way. Did you know that lions rarely ever try to hunt an animal that is the strongest? They go after the weak, the sick, and the alone. You know what? The devil's just like that. The devil loves to catch you when you're weak. When you're home alone by yourself or you're in your bedroom and you have these thoughts of pornography or thoughts of these things that you know that you should not be doing. He's ready to pounce because he sees us in those moments are a weakness. The devil, one of the greatest tactics that I've used, and many of you watching this today, you believe this lie. You believe that you don't have to go to church. You don't have to gather online or you don't have to gather in person. But that is the number one trap the devil uses. He convinces you that you don't need each other. I've been a pastor for over 20 years. And more than addiction, more than sin, more than anything else, 
This has been the trap that I've seen used the most by the devil. That he convinces you, yeah, I can be a Christian by myself. I don't need the church. I can just watch TV preaching, or I could just do this, or I could do that. But the truth is, we need each other. And I would really encourage you today that if you don't have a church, if you're not plugged into a small group, I would really encourage you to make the choice today because in your weakness together, not only is Christ strong, but we can be strong for each other. Here's an interesting fact. Lions actually set traps for their prey. When a lion gets actually much older and they have a big mane, often their teeth will start to fall out. The old males, they actually uh, don't have the same speed or strength like they used to. So what they will do is they will let off a big roar and they will actually just scare the animal. And the animal will run straight into the trap of the younger female lions. Because just like in the human world, females do all the work. And so the lion will roar, roar, and panic sets in. And the animals start to scatter, and they run right into the trap, and the enemy is waiting. And you know what? The devil is just like that. He jumps into our life with a diagnosis. It could be cancer or we, with depression or whatever it is that he's trying to trap us with. Loneliness. And we start to panic. Maybe it's finances. Maybe a relationship falls away. And when we start to panic, the devil has us right where we, he wants us because we don't make our best decisions when we're panicked. This is why the Bible talks about having a sober mind. Lastly, lions actually jump on their prey, but they'll actually jump and grab it anywhere. By the leg, by the tail, by the back, by the butt, they don't care. Because all they got to do is they just got to hang around long enough. And then they eventually make their way up to the throat. And lions can actually, they have this heat-seeking part of their mouth that they actually can feel the blood and they can kill. Here's the thing. The devil's exactly like that. All he wants to do is he wants to hang around your life long enough so he can eventually steal, kill, and destroy. See, often we can think, well, it's just a little bit of lying. It's just a little bit of bad talk. It's just a little bit of this. It's just a little bit of that. It's just a little bit of sin. But the truth is, the devil is looking to devour us. And if he can hang around in our life in the form of sin, it's just a matter of time before he can kill us. The truth is, we need to be people who flee from the very sign of sin. We need to be people that live like Christ, that we don't play with sin to see how long we can hang around. Here's some good news. A lion's success rate of hunting when they hunt alone is actually very low, somewhere around 17%. Why? Because often the prey is smarter and faster and can run longer. I want to encourage you when you allow Christ to come into your life, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When you have his spirit living in you and you become, when I become his temple, it's easier for me, it's easier for us to say no and to recognize the trap of the enemy. So I would encourage you today, 
During this COVID-19, I know that it's been hard. I hear so many people and many are saying, you know what, during this time, I've grown closer to God and I read my Bible more and I'm thriving. And even though I miss being together, I know that God is with me. And I hear so many people and that is so encouraging. But then there's so many others who haven't picked up their Bible haven't watched an online service, who haven't been involved in community. And you're watching this maybe today or tomorrow and you're thinking, why do I feel so alone? Because the devil is like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The key to this is this. We need to make Christ the cornerstone of our life. The most important part where everything intersects. That he is the strong point for us. And when the enemy attacks, he will hold us firm. So I encourage you today, I want you to listen to this song. I want you to just let God examine your heart. Recognize where the attacks are coming from and submit your life to him. And we'll be right back. Let's listen to this song together.
I would encourage you today. You may have been watching all of these weeks and you might be thinking, Troy, do you actually believe that Jesus is the source and the solution to all of my problems? Yes, I do. You may be thinking, Troy, do you really believe that if I let God into my heart, that he will help me fight off these, this darkness that's around me? Yes, I do. I would encourage you today to submit your heart to him. There's a connection card above. Why don't you fill it out today? I would love to talk to you about what it looks like to follow Jesus. But I want you to know that following Jesus doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It just means you'll never be alone. Let's pray. Dear God, I pray as we examine our hearts today that we would recognize our weaknesses that we recognize that we need you and that you are the cornerstone of our life. That we would fully submit our hearts to you today. That today, wherever we are, that we would feel your presence and know that you love us that the enemy actually has no power over us. He's old and he's toothless and he's weak. But we need you. In your name. Amen. I'm going to read a benediction together. And the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ. After you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Okay, kids and adults, it's done. You should have looked for all the I symbols. So make sure that you send me a message before 1130. Check out my Facebook at 12 o'clock where I will be doing the draw live. So I hope that you didn't miss any. I'll see you soon. Bye. Stand before the throne.